Guys, 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 welcome back to my channel. My name is Najwa Eek. If you're new here, please do me a favor, subscribe. That eek that you just heard is me like going crazy. Oh my god. So I am pressing my coffee right now. I'm really excited because the Invictus Games is today. Probably no one else in the world is like crickets. I'm the only one that's excited about this right now. Anyway, I really love Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Anyway, dude, like the black like the black left or black democratic party i don't know what's happening but something is happening you guys if you know me you know i live in europe but i was born in the u.s my husband is european i've lived in france for five years but i still hold my doggone blue american passport even when i speak french people know immediately i'm american and they know that i'm southern like i cannot change that i am a southern black american woman so obviously i keep up with everything I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. I can't help it. Something is happening, you guys. Like, I watched a Roland Martin segment last night. It was like watching a slow train wreck, actually. I couldn't turn away from it. I was watching it at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry. I'm, like, literally pouring coffee right now. I was watching it at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. And I literally couldn't go to sleep. I remember there was maybe even one point where my husband kind of like rolled over, put his hand on the computer screen and spanked me on my bottom. Like, I guess even subconsciously in sleep, he's like, go to sleep. But I literally could not turn away. It was like 30 minutes of like hair pulling and cat fights, basically. He was basically having an all out argument with his panelists and... You guys know that I love Roland Martin. I love Roland Martin. Like, my mom used to listen to Roland Martin in the car every day on the way to Browns Mill Elementary School. Like, literally, it just was, like, really, really weird because I was like, what is happening here? I'm trying to understand what is happening here. Like, there was... Okay, I guess let me just try to explain this and then we'll... <laughs> We'll drop the tea, I guess. There was this ensuing sort of clash over what I understand. Now, let me go ahead and caveat this with saying I am not a lawyer, okay? I'm not a politician. I worked for an advocacy organization for two years. I've always been interested in activism. Kind of fell off when Donald Trump became president like a lot of millennials do. And I feel like I have a very unique story for that. But my expertise is in advertising, okay? It's in art direction and advertising and marketing. I am not a lawyer. I am not a lobbyist. I'm not a political strategist. I'm not a politician, you know, but I am one um, in my night job, I guess you could say. It's like I really am interested in stuff. So I don't understand everything, but <clears throat> to my understanding, I do study a lot. I, at the same time, I don't want to diminish what the effort I do put in. I do study a lot. I do really try to understand and research and stuff. So I guess you could say I'm an amateur, but I'm a committed amateur with passion. <laughs> but I think to my understanding, Roland Martin was on the stance of the black community needs to come together. You know, the same crap my mom, and I know lots of moms, always talking about almost like a diaspora. Like we need to form a diaspora movement where we come together and we have a solid and a, a solidarity among us, a force for the Democratic Party to get the president elect that we want in the office, to get the presidential administration that we want in the office, and to make sure that they stick to the goals that we set and he's saying the key in which we're going to do that by is by state you know each state okay the other panelists which is one guy who's probably around Roland's age one and two Gen Y people you know and I'm just going to break it down like that because I feel like baby boomers Roland Martin's generation maybe they're a little bit younger maybe they're between baby boomers and Gen Y but still I feel like baby boomers in terms of this right now Black baby boomers, just like white baby boomers, don't let Gen Y and millennials speak. I get it. They're like fonts of wisdom. They live through the Alabama bus riots and friggin' the four little girls and, uh, you know, Kansas City. Like, I get it, dude. But just like millennials and Gen Z, we're gonna have to be the ones to take over this wacky, magic school bus ride. So, like, 
educate us, but also give us a chance to speak. And Roland Martin, as he has a tendency to do, although I love him, he was railroading over his panelists. They could not get one single word in. And by the end of the video, if you weren't crystal clear on what he was trying to convey, you literally had it beaten into your face. And when you look down in the comments, some of the people are like, you see, that's why Roland Martin doesn't get on the mainstream channels. Roland Martin's always talking about black media. This is not me. This is what people were echoing in the comments. That's why uh, Roland Martin's always talking about people should invest in black media, but he can't even give his panelists a chance to speak, etc., etc. Now, his panelists, Rebecca, I felt the worst for because, I mean, like uh, obviously she's a woman, so I feel like I have a little sympathy for women. For, for woman, for woman, I feel sympathy for woman. I try to, like, never ever label myself as a feminist because... You know, I was talking, you guys know that I'm on the catechism course. I grew up Muslim, but I've always just had Jesus in my heart. I know it's super cheesy, but anyway, um, and I've been in the, in the Christian church for 10 years, but lately I've been on my catechism course uh, towards my baptism to be ca baptized in, in the Catholic church. And so I have mentors who have helped me along the way. They're amazing. And, um, you know, I was telling them... Like, maybe it's my upbringing, maybe it's because I grew up in freaking Masjid of Atlanta. Like, my dad was a painter, my mom was a school teacher. Like, mega, mega, middle, working class background, you know, seven sisters and brothers. My parents used to wear daishikis. Like, I really am coming from that, like, whimsical, eccentric, black, uh, Southern American family background. But on both sides of my parents, I come from a long line of Christians or whatever. So maybe it's coming from that. But I never want to just 100% say that I'm a feminist because I don't know that I 100% align with the ideals. But if you look at all of my content on my channel, you know I am pro-woman. I want to see women succeed. I want to see them make, you know, a dollar on the dollar for every man, you know, where they make 84 cents. I want to see them make a dollar. I want to see women not be constantly victim blamed. You know, I want to see women have the... Um, the wings to bloom and go from young girl to adult to womanhood and be able to spread her wings across whatever she wants to do, education, whatever it might be. Um, but at the same time, again, this might be coming from grandma, this might be coming from my dear, this might be coming from big mama, you know, those long lines of black women in my family who were working moms, but also moms and wives underlined underlined you know I guess I'm, I'm posing all this to say something that but has randomly become controversial these days but in my childhood it wasn't but I do believe that there is an inherent energy to men and women to the man and I won't say men and women I'm gonna say to the masculine and the feminine you know women and men we have different temperaments you know and if you are going to ignore that you know and I feel like that's where I just kind of fall out of the jurisdiction of feminism but anyway that's all to say I have a soft spot in my heart you know when I see a woman really trying real hard to get their point across because as a black as I said a black southern woman who has been in many a board meetings where I am the only black person let alone the only black woman I've been that one who's just had to kind of keep holding my tongue while people just kind of stump all over my words while I really have something that I want to say not just because I want to say it, but because I feel like it'll contribute to the symbiosis of the conversation and help elevate whatever the project or initiative or goal that we're working on. <clears throat> I think every young girl or woman has been through that. And um, men, while well, I love them, you know, I'm very, I'm married to a very strong willed, although not a black man, my husband is white, but. I am married to a very strong-willed, strong, opinionated, whatever man, you know, and sometimes that testosterone just gets in the doggone way. I've got uh, three brothers, and I've got a lot of stepbrothers. Same thing. You know, we would be in the house, and they would be downstairs playing uh, some NBA video game, laughing, having fun, drinking grape coat, and then two seconds. Later, there will be a hole in the wall, and somebody with their leg bent behind their back and their elbow down their arm, like a, a you know Peter Griffin character from Family Guy. You know, I just feel like men and women don't we don't have the same temperament, but at the same time, they can walk away from that and be totally good. 
Rebecca was getting railroaded over. And it's so funny because <clears throat> you know how you have that cognitive bias thing where they say, like, you know, women kind of uh, mix men up or men mix women up when they look at them on a picture or, like, white people might see black people and think that they have similar features when they really don't or whatever. It's like that. that no, it's like more like a racial bias or ethnicity bias, whatever. I guess I was having that, but like reverse, because for a minute there, I thought that Rebecca was Reese, but it wasn't Reese. Meanwhile, Reese and Robert was getting railroaded over too. I love Robert because, and I was really surprised. Oh, hold on, Amazon. All right, y'all. We gonna get this together. So I was really surprised because Robert, to me, seems quite sober, sound-minded, and uh, very knowledgeable. He's usually one of Roland's go-to guys. He is a sort of a silent, dignified type, you know. Whereas women, they have that stereotype of just thinking with their emotions. So I thought maybe, okay, Roland was just trying to railroad over Rebecca because she was thinking with her emotions, which, okay, women can fear, fear, okay, sure, if you want to go that route. But still, I feel like, okay, let me just get to the point. Anyway, Rebecca was there. I thought Rebecca was Reese, but it wasn't. But then I was like, wait, dude, that's not Reese, that's Rebecca. So I get up today and I see a video on the 11th hour with Simone, who is freaking amazing. And she's talking with Reese from the Roland Martin channel. And I'm like, what is this topsy-turvy world that I have landed in? <laughs> okay, and so literally, Reese is wonderful as usual, just like Rebecca is, just like uh, Robert is. Even Scott, he, Scott is cool, Roland is cool, you know? Why are we clashing over these things? where we need to be showing each other some stop the black on black violence please stop the black on black violence and sometimes i guess it's like nikki haley said i guess if she thought she was doing something but i guess it's like sometimes you just need a woman to come in and do what a man's job thinks he is whatever um simone was able to let reese and this lovely black gentleman who she said had a vest on you know uh this this strategist speak speak it's 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 okay like i feel like um you know i watched a special on msnbc the other day and this is coming out of black media a little bit and i think we have to be able to do that because i feel like where black media is falling short is a giving the voice to younger voices giving the platform to speak to younger voices. And I don't just mean Gen Y younger voices, like late 30s, early 40s, early late 40s, early 50s. I mean also the millennial and the Gen Z voices, people like me. And I don't mean to make this about me or anything like that, but the people, the black people especially, who I see struggling the most with politics are young people because they know this is a torch that they're gonna have to take over soon but they're totally totally ill prepared because there are some people who are very 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 unwilling to give up power okay to a younger generation or to even teach them what needs to be done in a civil sort of respectful manner but also given with the symbiosis to know that hey sometimes the young the old will learn from the young if they would just let the young speak i feel like that is the first part of it is that young black millennials and gen z especially gen z is facing more depression anxiety disorders suicidality than any generation ever before i mean Dude, that's the generation of my favorite doggone nephew. And even my husband is three years younger than me. He comes from Gen Z. And I'm a millennial. Even though we're only three years apart, some stuff he does, I'm like, oh, y'all are weird. Like, wh why are y'all so negative and uh, isolated and lonely? But you get it. It's because of this. Because every time they try to have some semblance of a voice, they get stomped down. 
it's time. It's time. Like if it, the many of the young voters, I'm sorry, many of the voters that the black part of the Democratic Party is trying to get, or even the Republican Party, if we want to make this bipartisan, this this message can be expanded out. If they're trying to get all these voters that they're missing, that they missed in 2016, that they missed in 2020, and that they could possibly miss in 2024, whether you're looking at national polls or state polls, okay, like it's trendy to say national polls are not necessary. When it comes to research, yes, all of it should be considered. I agree with you on the state level. That's what should be um, emphasized at this moment. Again, I'm an amateur and I'm not a political strategist, but I think it all needs to be considered as someone who's studied digital marketing strategy. It's the same way that strategy works. You know, I can't do a research design. I can't do a sample market and observe only the macro and not the micro. I can't like look at my demographics and look at this huge wide scale but not go in on an individualistic basis. But in the same way, I can't just go in and say, okay, I just did a customer journey for, you know, this the sample sample size that I could do this this uh, sample group that I could do here. And uh, we think that the, uh, you know, if perfect customer would be someone who drives a Prius and makes $330,000 a year and, you know, lives in the suburbs of Seattle. You know, like, I can't do that and then pull out and look at, okay, maybe that's one person, but that's probably not going to be every single instance. That's not going to be the macro situation. So, I mean, I know it's a different field of study, but it's just like, let I mean, ultimately what I'm saying is let the Gen Z millennial voices get in there and speak a little bit. Let the female voices speak a little bit. Now, Again, this is not to demonize Roland Martin. I freaking love the freaking channel. Like, it is my go one of my go-to sources. Like, and I feel like, to be honest, I feel like I can argue that he actually gives women a chance at the real hardball politics more than a, a lot of the, the major news stations do. He really, really does because you can see it through this. You can see it that He's going to treat them just like he would treat a man. I know that sounds terrible. <laughs> Steve Harvey, act like a man, think like a woman. Um, think like a man, act like a woman. But, you know, like, seriously, that thing. Like, he, he, he he's not going to basically pussyfoot around a woman. He's going to let her come in there and, and do what he does. And I love that. You know, it's. I feel like it's a way that we've gotten to where we are. The progress that we've made is that people like Roland Martin give women and marginalized people, black voices, the chance to be basically show, hey, we have a voice and I know that there's other people out there who think like me. But sometimes he does have a tendency to become a little bit dogmatic and not let other people speak. And I think that reflects out to the larger problem. Now, with that being said, like, I hope that I verbalized that well. I know I have a tendency to just go all out. But like, basically what I'm trying to say with that is like, women... And young black voters need to be given a chance to share their opinions, to share their thoughts. When I was 17 years old and worked on the Obama campaign, passing out flyers and putting signs in my neighborhood, I remember we were going around and taking off people's signs in my neighborhood for uh, who was running up against him. Was it George Bush or was it Al Gore? Uh, no, 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 it was McCain. We were going around taking up McCain signs. Um... Like, I believe it was McCain. I'm sorry if my memory is slipping me. Again, I said I'm an amateur. But I remember I really felt like I had a voice in that. I felt like millennials had a voice in Obama's 2008 campaign. It's like he really wanted to hear us. He really wanted to hear from us. And he wanted to take that and implement that in his policy. Not only us, but you know, Gen Y and Gen, well, not Gen Z at that time because they were babies, but Gen Y and baby boomers and even the silent generation. It was like, I'm here. I want to hear you. I want to listen to you. What can we do to put this in together? But an emphasis on young people, boom. What I feel like what is slipping right now with Biden, Harris and the Trump campaign and all the random independents in there. And I am a left centrist. Okay. So I feel like Independence is just like a fifth, a different coin of myself. I feel like I understand them to a certain extent, but even independence, it's like they're missing the ball and all the opportunity with just adopting a little bit of humility, 
a little bit of silence and letting young people talk. When it comes to the Black Democratic Party, it's letting young black people talk. Now, with that being said, like women is in there too. I basically want to emphasize women too. Young black women, young black boys, whatever. But the thing that you have to add into that is, and what I feel like black democratic media owners like the Black Star Network, even those outlets like Simone, like, um, you know, Joy Reid, et cetera, et cetera, um, are missing is that this generation of young black voters is more diverse than it ever was before. I am not the only one of my friend group that I know who married someone of a different generation, who married someone of a different ethnicity, who married someone of a different culture. Like that is happening so much more. My whole doggone family is mixed up, mixed up with people who have uh, white, half white kids, mixed up with uh, Hispanic, mixed up with some Native American back from grandma, great grandma. I mean, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. And that is becoming more and more the norm. You know, I have families who I have people in my family who are Muslim, people in my family who are Christian, people in my family who are atheists, people in my family who literally are Australian and speak the Queen's English. It's like that right there is becoming more and more and more the norm of black millennials and black Gen Z. Whatever we want to do in 2024, bipartisan speaking here, you know, if we want to get Biden Harris in the in the um, office, if we want to get an independent uh, sort of name on the ticket, like, um, um, the guy who wears the suit. Why am I always forgetting his name when I really need to know it? Anyway, you get what I'm saying? Whatever the black part of the Democratic Party wants to do, like, it's young millennials and uh, Gen Z are going to have to be given a moment to speak, and women are too. That's going to be the key here. That's what happened in 2016. 2016 slowly was this game of like, okay, like, the boys got this. Even black men. It was like, we got this. Let's just forget about young people. Let's forget about millennials, Gen Z, women. I'm not trying to start a culture war here. I'm not trying to stir up some stuff. But y'all know I'm right. I got Republicans in my family, too. Y'all know I'm right. Whether I'm Democrat or Republican, whether independent, green, y'all going to have to give the platform a little bit to millennial and Gen Z. Not just speaking for millennial and Gen Z, but actually letting them let the country know what they think democracy is, what they want to see, and have those policies implemented, as well as women. <laughs> I guess that's all that I wanted to say. You know, I feel like I have a unique point in this because I am not a politician, you know? Like, I'm just someone who cares about saying, hopefully, that, like, civics and, you know the law and policy be leaning towards diversity, be leaning towards um, helping to reduce the impacts of climate change, be leaning towards having millennials and Gen Z not be uh, raising our kids in world wars and uh, a planet that no longer functions because we've sucked all of the resources out of it or we've put in bullet holes in everyone, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with Merla Martin on the state thing. I do. I've been going back and revisiting some of the stuff that I had the luxury to read when I was a kid in school that people don't have today, like Frederick Douglass, like W.E.B. Du Bois, like Booker T. Washington, and even the people from back then, you know, like the abolitionists, the people who were living during Reconstruction were saying the same things, that the states and the black people needed to come together to have some sort of force to reckon with a unified source, but that's not going to be accomplished with us beating each other down, busting each other's teeth out, you know? It's going to be accomplished with us having conversations, you know? So, yeah, open up the conversations. Let the young guy, let the young girls speak. I mean, if it makes you uncomfortable, yes, that, that those groups are going to be filled with women. It might be filled with interracial relationships. It might be filled with... um 
transgender people. It might be filled with people of different religions, but that's the only way that, I mean, whatever agendas that want to be on a bipartisan table are going to advance forward. Um, Simone did a real good job of doing what Roland didn't do. I mean, which was give them a chance to speak. And I, I also thought it was really, really weird that Reese, like, was there. Because I have a feeling that these two things were kind of happening, not in tandem. I have a feeling that black media is watching black media. What Roland Martin has been banging on about over and over and over again is picking up, you know? Like, I feel like MSNBC, which is a major news network, although it does lean left, it's a major news network. I feel like they heard that. I feel like they hear it, you know? What What is the coincidence that Roland Martin has this huge clash with his panelists on his channel talking about national and state polls and forming a black alliance so that we can really show face in 2024? And then we have Simone, one of the, the most prominent black anchors on MSNBC, talking about the same thing with one of the major panelists from Roland Martin. And why was it that when Roland Martin was having this clash, that Rebecca was there that day and not Reese? You know, like, that, that's my question. I want to know what y'all think. Let me know in the comments respectfully. Uh, I hope that I didn't just, like, talk my head off. Um, I would love to know what you guys think. If you're new to the channel, click the like and subscribe button, hit the bell so you know whenever I post a video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.